keep them in order. It's really important because sometimes it can be difficult on these to see the direction or the directionalness on the skate um, because it, it's it's swayed and it's not really. I mean, I, I'm not gonna say I made a mistake earlier, but I, I did catch myself as far as uh, not making that error and putting the stencil on the wrong side. So, uh, so that's why I started putting these, putting them out to the front. Uh, so I'm going to by the time this project is complete, I should have completed about uh, 38 pairs uh, for them to give away. So this is right at the tail end um, of this gig. So you can see that they're, they're really large skates. So the first thing I want to do with these guys is um, I have a brush here, and I'm just going to you know comb down a little bit of the suede nap on it make sure it's clean there are no like stray pulled leather strands off of it get those combed down just go ahead and comb those down okay now once we've got them ready to go is that what the next the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, be cutting on the uh, silhouette cameo uh, the project there so um, I'm going to walk over and I'm going to show you guys how I load that up. Um, in this video, I'm not going to have the, the desktop so you guys can view uh, the thing, but I will make a video that shows you how to, um, shows you how to uh, capture images, cut images, how to move the pica points to really adjust and make all your uh, stencils crisp. So let's, uh, let's go check out the silhouette there. So the first thing I need to do is make sure I've got my thing cleared in here and I'm going to be using a sticky sticky pad to hold my sticker stencil uh, paper in place. Um, the paper that I'm using is an Oracle, Oracle 651. Um, they are Oracle papers that are different textures. You can also use the Avery. Um, they have a low tack and a high tack. For this particular project I'm going to be using uh, the high tack. I want to make sure that it sticks. I want to make sure that it sticks completely um, to the suede and all I'm doing is loading it up. Um, it's got two little arrows that allows you to kind of space out. Um, it also has one for like an 18 mat, and then of course you can go all the way to the 24 um, on this particular model. Um, let me see if I can get it more in. You can see it there. It's really big, so it's really hard to get into the camera angle. Maybe on the next one I'll adjust it. But once it's loaded, then you just uh, go ahead and head over and click it to start, and we'll see it go into action. So you can watch it. And it's going to take a little bit for that to be cutting. So while I'm cutting, I'm basically just going to get um, going to get my area cleaned up a little bit before I go. Um, I've got two transfer papers. You guys can see here. I've got a masking one that is not clear. This is also a low tack masking. Um, and then there's the clear one um, that I'm using. I like working with the clear one. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, and you do have to get them in this fairly large rolls, at least for me it's more cost effective. But for you it's like an initial investment where you have to waste a lot to do it. Um, it's, just, it's just helpful uh, when you're placing a stencil um, over another stencil or trying to get a specific location. If you're able to view where you're putting it, um, this, this works the best. I just think it works the best. Um, I'm also going to be using a little squeegee. Um, that's just to press down on the transfer uh, paper to make sure it grabs all the little bits and things that I need. Um, it'll also help uh, transfer it over. I've got a weeding tool, and basically what this is is a pin. Let's see if I can see it this way. It's a pin with a very, very uh, needle-esque point, but it's a very tiny needle, and it will allow you to pick up uh, all the negatives that you don't need for your paint to actually push through. So that's what I've got here. And I've also got um, an X-Acto knife. This is the squeegee. And then I've also got some tweezers to, find, to pick up and pull some of those fine details. Um, I'm going to be using an airbrush. And I've also got a pre-mixed pre -mixed color. Um, it's a combination of some Alpha Flex and some Andalus, which are both acrylic paints, so it's okay that they mix together. Um, the, Alpha, the Alpha Flex from um, Alpha 6 is a little more highly pigmented, so it's a very, very, I'll show you what that bottle looks like there. This is um, the Alpha, Alpha Flex paint, 
And then of course everyone's old fave and go-to is the Angelus uh, colors there. That's in combination what I'm going to be using to create uh, a unique brown that kind of matches the logoing and then kind of gives it a good pop. Um, if I would have been too matchy-matchy, it would have been very noticeable um, on it. So I think I think the cutter is almost done. Let's see. Still going. Still going. All right. So we're going to let that finish up. Uh, this has already been shaken. I've already pretty much got my airbrush ready to go, and I'm going to be using an Iwata, uh, an Iwata uh, CS. Um, I also have an uh, uh, Iwata Jet uh, airbrush compressor, so it's silent. It only percolates and makes the noise when I'm actually spraying, uh, so it's good for making videos, and if you're working inside or in your, in your home office, um, it's not constantly running like a like a car uh, air compressor um, uh, while working. I don't really need any brushes this time. It's all going to be pretty pretty clean and simple. So once that guy gets uh, finished cutting, I'm going to pull the stencil. We're going to do a little bit of weeding um, of the positive to negative. And a lot of times that is very um, time consuming depending on how detailed uh, the stencil is. Um, you know, it, that's when it can fluctuate. Also, you have to keep in mind that you're also going to be doing some graphics before that. So if it's an important thing if you're trying to factor in cost of like how much each project um, should be budgeted or you're quoting your client. Um, always keep in mind that there is a graphic design component nowadays uh, with designs, not just the painting part. So the cutter is done. So let's go unload it. done. Now I'm just going to peel it off. All right, so now that we've got, we've got it peeled off here. Um, it's actually not a very big stencil. You can actually see it there. It's not very big. Um, uh, it's got it's got the obviously the excess, and I always make sure that when I'm doing some graphics, I always um, Make sure to uh, create a square around it, just so that it makes it easy to peel away, and then I don't have to um, uh, I don't have to go back and like cut a jagged square to do what I need to do. You can actually actually cut another stencil that goes around, that's more detailed around the image. But when you do that, um, you can have a hard time taping what you're doing. So um, I don't I don't really do that. I just create a, a little square uh, around it. So. to show you all here I'm going to weed this out it goes pretty fast this is actually a pretty pretty simple stencil you just might run into little snags where maybe um, the cutter hasn't cut all the way um, and so that's when I have the exacto knife um, ready to go so let's just work pretty quickly here get the stencil Silk and Sonic going. Just get my eye. Start eliminating the rollers. As I've been doing these, um, the little roller part or the little part of the D and the O has kind of stayed behind as I'm transferring it, but that's not a problem. You can always pluck it back in um, if it doesn't seem to capture, get captured by this, the transfer. Okay. Get that one done. And we got that one done. And now we're going to move on to the actual pictures of Anderson Pack. Now this one, um, it has been a little because I don't want it all to come out. Because the way that I did the stencil, I made it all one one piece that just kind of peels up all the way. I realized that that was probably not the best idea because as it got smaller, what it was doing is it was making it kind of stick onto itself and I was losing some of my little bit of bits. So 
as you're working, you start to just kind of realize, okay, that's that doesn't work as well. So all I'm doing is cutting little little slits, um, and making sure not to cut my actual actual stencil to ruin the crispness, but just to make it easier to. this part to come off pretty clean and in case anything um, in case anything pulls up I like to have extra of the stencil that way I can just work fast and um, you know if I'm already spraying and I've got my airbrush set up and I don't want it to um, dry out uh, I've got an extra stencil to sort of kind of work through pretty fast so we've got that for this nose and I just kind of do a quick look over and see make sure that I've got all of my uh, little components that go along with it all right and so now we're ready to go. Um, so I've got my two stencils um, what I'm going to do is snip a little piece of this transfer tape you could slice it pretty fast so got that done and then just make sure um, double check triple check what you're doing I already know that the silk sonic goes on the left and the uh, Bruno Mars on his back goes on the right so we're gonna start real quick with the silk sonic part which is kind of an instant gratification when we're working uh, so you guys can see that put this down I'm actually gonna set up the skate so you guys can watch it up there. Got the stencil. I'm going to use the squeegee to sort of kind of press it down. Make sure I get all the little bits that I need. Pull this away. Um, and you know, sometimes it'll come clean, sometimes it won't, so just got to be careful. And then what I do is I keep my weeding tool handy and it allows me to kind of nudge, nudge some of it up. I'm going fast. You should go slow. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, this just make sure that you're getting all the little bits, like this little end wants to not come with me. And I'm not going to worry about um, the O, the little center point of the O or the, or the R. But see, now we've got it. And make sure not to toss this because it's still got some little bits remaining. Um, but now you can see, now you can see that it's all kind of picked up on there. And all I'm going to do is make sure, I'm just visually going to place it. Um, in some cases, sometimes um, you're going to have to be extremely accurate if you're doing double stencils or stencils upon each other. Um, this is where that clear is super duper 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 important so that you can match up link over. Um, if you're doing a stencil with multiple colors, like say for example, if I was doing Silk Sonic and maybe I was doing uh, inner inner color or maybe an outline color um, that is a, that is a sequence that can be a little difficult but once you figure it out is it basically you take one stencil you lay it down and then the second stencil will be slightly ever so slightly um, larger so that it kind of overlaps the color um, it's it's not easy it's a, it's a pretty kind of technical skill you have to make sure that your colors are able to cover each other um, sometimes you've got to spray white before you spray your color to make it pop um, so if that's a little bit more advanced, um, maybe I'll do a video on that to show you guys uh, stencil stacking. 
Um, and that's a sense where, like, when you're doing the artwork and you're working fast, you have to be careful because sometimes the paint isn't all the way dry, and then you stack another stencil on top of it, and you can actually peel it off. Um, that's when, like, the low-tack uh, oracle is important to use so that you can just lightly do and lightly mist colors on top. Um, I'm going to be doing some that are uh, Call of Duty themed, and I'll, I'll make a video so you guys can see how I stack and, uh, and do it uh, without the stencils coming off. It's very one of the most common questions, how do you get them not to peel up with you? It's just the quality of the uh, sticker paper that you're using. So now that we've got this guy down, I'm just going to peel off carefully, and I'm going to hold down my actual stencil stencil, and then just peel off this clear tape. This one, we can't use it twice because it gets, see how it gets that little weird filmy thing? That's just because of the suede. It pops up some of the leather um, things in it. And if you're working on another stencil, um, like if I was doing using it again, um, I found that it doesn't hold the tack as well. So now I'm just quickly locking off all the little extra tidbits of the letter. You can see my hands are constantly pressing down on the suede. I just want to make sure that all the little suede, the suede bits are, um, all the little suede bits are down. And now I'm just going to tape. So that's just a catch all of my overspray. Um, you can use a bigger stick, you can use a two inch masking tape. So you can, but I'm just working so fast and I've done so many of them that I'm just going to use this regular uh, one inch tape. And you can use blue tape, you can use frost tape, whatever is cost effective. I'm working really fast. I don't really like to use my tapes overnight. Um, I kind of work tape go as I, as I work. Sometimes I do wet removal um, with the stencil. Some people like to leave it overnight. And the problem with doing that is that acrylic is very elasticy. You put a lot of coats and you leave that stencil and that tape. Uh, together overnight um, a lot of times you'll have to go back and do like this putting so that it doesn't uh, want to pick up on you and so uh, when I work I work really fast so I'm just kind of lightly blow drying just enough so that I can not smudge it and then I'll pull off but you can see I've got my airbrush ready to go let's make sure we've got this um, nice spray not too much um, so here we go we're gonna put this in the back here so you guys can get and I'm just going to lightly go through one time. And I'm not trying to get it all done in one pass. butter and do any splattering. Test, I test off, off the actual artwork on a rag, and then I'm coming back to do it. I'm going to give it a light, a very light blow dry, just so that I can quickly stack another color on top of it. That's likely One more, and then lightly, lightly dry, just so that it doesn't smudge. So now that we've got it, I'm going to quickly blow dry. And this is to quickly uh, prevent any kind of smudging as I'm pulling off, even with my own hands and fingers, so that I don't do any of that. Um, so here we're going to do a quick peel. Peel this off. And, of course, you can be much more careful when you're doing it. I'm just going to pull it from both corners. I'm going to make sure to get all of the stencil off without it tearing. So 
Bam, look at that. And now I'm just going to quickly, and this is where it's important where you have to dry it just enough so that it doesn't smudge. I'm tapping it, or you can use your tweezers to get it off. That one. we've got it. Now, uh, after this, now that I've got all the stencil removed, I'm still going to hit it with a blow dryer because now I want to get that permanence in um, in the stencil. Uh, it's pretty wet. It's suede, so don't touch it. I mean, avoid touching it because if you do, you're going to do like this little ink stamp pad on your head and then you're going to, uh, it's, it's a mess. Don't do it. Make sure to dry it. light mist of color and uh, we did the kind of in-between dries on it so it's actually it's okay to touch it now you can see how it's now pretty crisp there so we've got that one done I'm gonna set we're gonna set this guy over here and over here in between there and so now we're gonna work on the other one which is uh, the Bruno and Anderson back. Now this one's a little bit more trickier because it's got little tiny tidbits and this one just requires just a little bit more patience on your part if you're doing um, artwork that is detailed like these kind of face stencils thing. Um, once again, I'm just going to lay it right over. I'm just going to press with a little squeegee. I'll try to get all the little bits. So once I got it, I'm just going to take it, peel up the little corner here, and I'm just going to try to get all the little bits. So this is where it gets a little, a little bit deep. I'm going to take my weaving tool and also just kind of help it out a little, come off, come off this thicker stencil backing, the transfer or the backing paper. Sometimes what happens is that, um, as the cutter is cutting and applying its pressure into uh, the actual sticker paper, it will sometimes cut too much into um, the actual blue paper, and that's what makes the little stencil stick. So that's why I'm just trying to help it along, just come up off of that um, there. And of course, anything that's not that's that's pretty, you know, not too um, space oriented, you can always come back in. Like we did the letters, just pick them back up as well. All right, so see, now we've got it. All right, now we're going to make sure not to toss this because it's got little bit still on it. I didn't get all the way. I'm not too worried about those. So we're just going to position the skate so you guys can see. Flip my hands around. Let's go here, there. And then I just kind of eyeball it. Just looks cool. And it's also in keeping with the other ones. And I'm just pressing down because I'm kind of digging this into the suede. I really want it to stick. Super crisp. Now I'm going to peel this away and I'm just going to do it carefully at the same time, tapping it down so that little bit wants to come up with me. The little, the little top parts that I just have have been giving me a little bit of a hard time, but that's okay. We can always pluck them back up. For the most part, I did all the front work. And it's a, it's a low tack also like transfer thing. So nothing really um, permanently sticks to this. So don't be scared. It's not a sticker where it's like a sticker upon a sticker and it's gonna stick. It's really meant to just kind of 
release itself. And so here we're going to take this little bit that's part of the hat, the cap on there. And we'll take that little eyelid, fringe eyelid. Put that little bit on there. And add the hot chocolate to it. Just a little more. And then roll the teeth to the mouth. And then uh, once again, we're just going to, I'm just going to tape off and make sure that I've got all of my um, paint parts that I don't want painted covered up. Um, that overspray can be, it can be expensive. It can be sometimes hard to clean, especially if you're working with whites. You definitely don't want to get any overspray. So it might seem excessive. Some people completely wrap their shoes in like tape or they use newspaper or um, a bag. It seems excessive, but um, if you've been doing it for a very long time, uh, just that overspray that you can't fix can be can be one of the most annoying things, and it can be very discouraging. So, um, you know, if you got to waste a little more tape, that's fine. It's tape. What's like tape five bucks, as opposed to like the shoe being you know, hundred and twenty if it's a collectible Jordan, maybe two three hundred dollars for whatever you're doing. So. Uh, better to just waste a little bit of extra tape. So we'll get this, get this going. Get that spray going. Like that. And now I'm going to give it a little blow dry just to make sure that I've got enough color on there. And then now I'm going to hit it with one more coat of color. Just make sure it's crisp. Color everywhere. Dry it and then I'm going to pull off. too worried about pulling different directions. Just making sure that all the, um, the stencil tape has been dry just because I'm going to go back and pull away. Just get my paint crisp and clean. Take off that little eyebrow that we added. I want to make sure and give it that final dry um, before I start uh, wrapping it or putting it. Um, if you're working with something that is had took a lot of layers to paint, let's say if you're doing a yellow where it's like white and then yellow on top, you actually do want to let that dry over. Not in this case, it's just one color. Did it really light? Um, I'm just going to dry through and then we'll be done.
pretty cool, right? Cool on that, so we're all done with that. Take them over here to this other camera, and uh, we are all done. That was pretty quick, right? Um, yeah, we kind of worked through it pretty fast. You can see all that. See these little. Let's see if we can get a close up of this one. You can see them there. You've got Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, and then you've got the Soap Sonic logo. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like. Leave some comments below. If you've got any questions, I'm going to be doing more videos uh, from now on. And some of the different things that I'm working on, um, I'm going to be uh, doing um, you know, live events. It's uh, with, I'm working with Subnation. Now, if you can see right down there. Oh, actually, down there. You can see the Subnation logo. And they are an amazing company. Um, they do a lot of gaming, and so um, I'll be doing lots of, um, now that the pandemic is over, doing lots of uh, live events. Um, I get to show or do uh, some really cool stuff for gamers or just people at events. So uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram. And, of course, you can go to kingofsneakers.com if you're looking for any materials, um, any tooling, any sticker paper. We've got paints, brushes, and all things you need to uh, start customizing uh, yourself. wondering how I'm able to paint for lots of hours. It's this guy right here. It's how I stay alive. <laughs> Who hit me with the hydrate?